Hey, this is Chris from Record Talk, and so if you hear some thunder, it's because I'm recording this during a thunderstorm. Hopefully the power won't go out. And so this is, in a way, sort of a response to a video that Chris Profi recently made. His album was called Crappy Albums That I Own Because I'm a Completist. So basically, as you would guess from the title, the theme was basically showing... Uh, artists that he really likes so he has all of their records or almost all their records and some of them aren't so good and so we show those these are probably records that maybe we should get rid of maybe we never should have bought in the first place and so i'm going to do a slightly different take on it for you this will be the first installment i'll probably will do future installments of this because i have several artists i can do this with i'm going to tackle three of them today i'm going to call this my favorite songs from stinker albums by my favorite artists and so we're going to start off with rem um so it's mostly cd but uh and one of the things is like these stinker albums oftentimes i've bought i bought them on cd in the past and it's not something i'm going to go back and rebuy on vinyl because it's well it's a stinker album i don't need to spend any more money on it so my first <clears throat> example is going to be REM. One of the most <clears throat> popular videos on my channel is my ranking the REM videos. And so I went 15 through 1. Of course, something had to be number 15. And <clears throat> here was my number 15. I made that video about two years ago. So it's REM Around the Sun uh, from the year 2004. So maybe there'll be a fancy 20th anniversary version of this next year box set. Um, and so I went back and rewatched the part of that video where I talked about this album. It was right at the start because it was number 15. So I said things like, this album sucks. This is terrible. Easy listening Michael Stipe. All his worst tendencies and none of his best. No interesting Peter Book guitar or mandolin. It's terrible. So I said that again. Peter even said that it isn't listenable. And so, uh, but in fairness, I went back and I re-listened to it to find out what my favorite song is on my least favorite REM record. I honestly don't think I'd listened to this album since I did my rankings video. And I'll be honest, uh, that was painful listening to this album again. This album is terrible. It's still terrible. I have not changed my mind on that. I guess I'm going to go with song number five, Final Straw, is my favorite song. Uh, the lyrics, it's an anti-Iraq war song. Um, so I kind of like the message, even though it's not that great musically. But by the standards of this album, it's fine. It, it's, one of, it's one of the few songs on this album that would stand a chance of not being the worst song if it was put on any other R.E.M. album. Uh, I hate most of these songs more than I hate Shiny Happy People. And this album was generally critically panned. All right, next. Uh, so you guys who are regular viewers know that I'm a big Juliana Hatfield fanboy. My very first video ever was ranking the Juliana Hatfield albums, but because she has so many damn albums, I actually only did a top 10, uh, which is only about half of it. <clears throat> so basically the lower half of her catalog did not get ranked, was not included in that video. But if I had done the complete discography, my least favorite Juliana Hatfield album is Juliana Hatfield, Peace and Love uh, from 2010. Uh, this one has never been issued on vinyl. Uh, this is on Yield Records, which was her own label. Um, this was during the early 2010s, which I consider to be the weakest part of her career. She did a lot of uh, sort of uh, pledge music, uh, crowdsourced funding uh, for records. Um, these are one of the things is these are actually the rarest Juliana Hatfield records. If you go to Discogs, these are the most expensive. This CD will probably set you back $50 if you can find it on sale. Um, but if you're not a Juliana Hatfield person, this is definitely not where to start. So let's talk about the album. So basically, this album is Juliana Hatfield in her bedroom with an 8-track digital recorder. She did everything on this herself. Uh, so I'll show you that. 
Composed, arranged, performed, produced, engineered, and mixed by Juliana Hatfield. I guess she doesn't know how to master because somebody did the mastering. Um, but the problem with this album is I don't want acoustic guitar playing, coffee house singing, Phoebe, Phoebe Buffet from Friends version of Juliana Hatfield. I want her to plug in her fucking guitar, get a drummer, give me the sour with the sweet, the yang with the yin, the rock with the sweet voice, uh, which you don't really uh, get on this album. This album is really a bunch of three minute songs that all seem like they're much longer. However, it's not nearly as bad of an album as Around the Sun. I still occasionally listen to this, and I know some parts of the Juliana Hatfield fan base do like this more than I do. If you're more into folky, acoustic music, you will like it more than I like it. Um, generally, her critically uh, most reviled album is Total System Failure, which was the polar opposite of this. It was basically her doing hard rock, almost metal, shreddy guitar solos that she never does, but she did them on that album. Dumb lyrics, but I, I like that one a lot more than this. So anyway... My favorite song on this record is going to be, and we're not getting the focus there. Oh, there we go. Song number nine, I Picked You Up. Um, it's the best of this lot. I would actually, it's actually a pretty good song. I would like it if it was put on a different Juliana Hatfield record and it served as sort of the mellow acoustic song on some different album. Um, looking it up, All Music gave this four out of five stars, which I think is way too much. Pitchfork was a 3.9 out of 10 on this because Pitchfork has to be very precise. They couldn't just say 4 out of 10. Um, and then my final choice for today for my favorite songs from Stinker Albums by my favorite artist is going to be Slater Kenny. So back in 2019, I've got, I even have the fancy schmancy Vinyl Me Please version. They released a song called The Center Won't Hold. And so back when I did my Slater Kinney ranking the albums video, I ranked this as my least favorite Slater Kinney album. And I said things like, this album sucks. I love Slater Kinney, but I don't like this album. They are trying to sound less like Slater Kinney. St. Vincent as the producer was nice in theory, but not so much in practice. And it was the final album with Janet Weiss. But that's not actually the album I'm going to be featuring because after that video was made, Slater Kinney in 2021 released another album called Path of Wellness, and it's even worse. And so what this album did was um, Slater Kinney is now officially off my instantly pre-order without streaming first list. Juliana's still on that list, but Slater Kinney have been removed from that list. Any future albums by them will be screened before purchase. Uh, now, I'm going to say on the re-listening, this album of the three I featured today actually came across the best in the re-listen. Um, so it's probably the best of the three albums I've shown. That R.E.M. Around the Sun, God, that's horrible. Um, neither Juliana's Peace and Love or Slater Kinney's Path of Wellness reach that level and what I'm going to go ahead and pick as my favorite song is song number three on side one called Worry With You the lead single and video that was chosen from that was this song and that seemed like a reasonable choice it's actually a pretty cool song and so that's what I'm going to go with there and so if you like this idea maybe you should try it yourself I'm probably going to do this a few more times with a few other bands of people that I have full or close to full discographies of uh, that I can do this with. So uh, thanks to Chris Profi for kind of pushing me along the ideas of this.